Welcome one, welcome all. I am Jason J. Atkins, joined by none other than the creator of Counter-Strike and also the new game tactical intervention, Gooseman. So we're going to start off with the interview. I'm going to start with a couple of quick questions. Gooseman, first of all, pleasure to, uh, pleasure to actually be interviewing you. Mm. you <laughs> I'm sure that everybody else watching this feels the same way. Mm. Your game, Counter-Strike, I mean, back in 99 when it first came out, it changed the way that online gaming was played. Obviously, eSports was born from it, basically, which mm -hmm. is where I've made my bones. Yeah. So first of all, honour. Well, I have to say, um, pleasure is all mine, dude. Well, thank you. It's a um, you know, it's a great honor to be here, and just uh, you know, I I really enjoy meeting people who who have a a great uh, fondness for our, for my, the game that I was working on. So, so yeah, it's it's just a pleasure to be here, and thanks for having us. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Uh, like, like I said, but pleasure is all mine. Seriously, yeah. seriously. Oh. I mean, ten years of my life, and I wouldn't even say stolen. I would yeah. say it was well spent. So, well, um, yeah. I've met a lot of interesting people through your game as well. And, I'd, I'd say up most of that is yourself, obviously. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's cool to actually sit down with you and actually, uh, you know, yeah. obviously we're going to be talking a lot about TI as well, but we're going to mm. go a lot through your history and yeah, things like that course, as well. Yeah, of course, yeah, for sure. Because um, we, do, we do have quite a bit of time to actually discuss. So mm -hmm. um, mm. I guess we'll start at the beginning. That's the most logical place to start. Sure. Obviously, mm. uh, let's, let's start with where you started gaming because we had a, a little brief discussion before we started filming. Mm -hmm. um, you said that you was obviously heavily into PC games. What was the first ever game you played? Uh, actually, I started gaming when I was eight years old. Uh, God, this was like, uh, so I'm 36 now, so eight years, 26 years ago. And I started with uh, the old system called a VIC-20, and uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but it's a super uh, primitive machine by today's yep. standards. So uh, the games back then just had like really just like 16 colors, and it just had like the resolution was like, uh, like 100 by 100 or something, some ridiculously small, so everything was really blocky. But you know, back then, I mean, uh, it was just for for me as a kid, just seeing these games and just growing up uh, with them and just playing them, they were uh, like really addictive and they were a big part of my life. And you know, I, I spent uh, the majority of my time uh, as a kid just playing games. And I wasn't very like social. I didn't really go outside and play sports. And uh, I was kind of cramped inside, uh, like in my room. And uh, you know, I think my parents were kind of uh, worried about this. They thought it might turn out kind of like like bad, and I thought it might affect my my life in in the future. But uh, you know, thankfully, I, I was able to turn it into something positive. And and you know. Grow, uh, you turn it into a career, and um, uh, yeah, I'm just really, uh, yeah, I just, I, I just feel lucky to be uh, a part of this industry. Yeah, honest, I kind know. of had the, the, the same sort of story. Obviously, I mean, mm. people always view gamers as, as you know, antisocial and, yeah, and this sort yeah. of thing. And I, I find that couldn't be further from the truth these days. I think with, with the advent of online gaming and things oh, like yeah, that, yeah, you have all the clans and stuff out there, you have every, yeah. everybody basically plays these days. So yeah, yeah. It's just another form of social interaction for, for somebody like myself and obviously yeah, like, yeah. like you as well. Totally agree, yeah. Now, with the VIC-20, is that where you first got into like homebrew and things like that, or would that come later? Uh, homebrew... Uh, like programming, that sort of thing? Oh, like no, actually, games. no. Actually, I haven't started... I didn't start actually making games until uh, when uh, the Doom, uh, the level editor for Doom came out. Uh, I guess this was 1996, I guess. So, yeah, I was, uh, it wasn't until I was like 15 w until I had the opportunity to actually create a game or just create a level for a game. So, and uh, it took me like forever just to make one level. I think yeah. it, I spent well, five months. Programs like Quark back in the day. Exactly. Like they, and they, they, were they were quite super chunky, primitive. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and not only that, but being a beginner and, and, and you know, back then they didn't have many, uh, many people that knew how to do it. So it was kind of a, a black art. So it, there wasn't many tutorials on the internet. It's not like it is D days. Yeah, where you can YouTube, just, you can find out how to do you can find like a sh yeah. you can find a crap load of tutorials on how to make uh, levels and make models but so back then it was a bit of a challenge but uh, but I remember when I first created the first level I was I was instantly uh, addicted to you know I, I kind of had that feeling wow this is this is definitely something I wanted to do as a career and uh, I, I just knew right then that I, I had a I had my my passion in, in life so yeah well, that's the thing I mean if you find your passion in life that's never work it's just you know, exactly it's, it's, yeah. it's a vocation more than a job at the end of the day yeah exactly which yeah. to be honest filming this interview today it really does feel like a vocation for me you know what well I mean? yeah I it's, appreciate yeah. this is this is super cool <laughs> well I'm <laughs> glad I can do that yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, moving on, of course, you, you, obviously you were quite involved in, in Quake, in the, uh, the early modern scene in Quake. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, I mean, the, the first iteration of Counter-Strike really would be Navy SEALs, wouldn't it? Why don't we, why don't yeah. we talk about that? Um, I, I suppose in a sense that was kind of like the, the whole start of uh, the whole military type shooter for me. Uh, you know, back then I was very much into uh, just the, the whole military aspect of, of uh, uh, you know, I think this was born from my, uh, just, uh, my love for just watching movies. And, and I was doing a lot of uh, research on uh, like special forces and how they, how they operate and the kind of weapons that they did. So for me, it was very intriguing. It was, very, it was kind of a very interesting topic. So uh, it was kind of natural for me to, to, to make a game on the Navy SEALs. 
and uh, I, I like that was my favorite unit back then. So, uh, so I basically made Navy SEALs Quake, uh, which was just a single player mod, and, play, uh, and it just ha had basically just a replacement of the guns, uh, for the weapons in Quake, to just replace them as uh, like real life weapons. And uh, uh, I think I, I added some bots, uh, but it was it was fairly uh, fairly primitive by by you know modding standards. So. But that really gave me a, f a first taste of um, creating my own mod, and, and it was, uh, yeah, for sure, it was one of the most uh, satisfying a accomplishments for me. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, everybody starts somewhere, don't they? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, just, I mean, just to get your, your sort of beak wet with something as cool as that is, is absolutely yeah. awesome. Now, one of the, uh, I only found this out today as well, which kind of freaked me out. I did, yeah. I did a little bit of research. Okay. Um, yeah. I found out that you worked on Action Quake too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like a huge Quaker back oh, in the day. Oh, yeah, um, God, yeah. And that was one of my favorite mods, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So, it's amazing. Uh, I actually, uh, not many people know about it. It's kind of a niche mod, but uh, I mean, for uh, with regards to Quake 2 mods, it was, I think it was one of the top five. I would say, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I remember what happened was um, I took a break after na after making Navy Seals Quake. I took a break because I was uh, starting my schooling, uh, university, so it was kind of stressful. So I took a year off uh, of making games. So I didn't make any games for a year, and then I came back a year later and I wanted to make a Navy Seals Quake too. But uh, what happened was uh, somebody took over the Navy Seals. Uh, uh, like uh, you know how it is back in the day when when someone takes over a website and they kind of take over the whole uh, concept of a game. It, it, it kind of happens a lot in the modding scene. So if you leave a if you leave a mod uh, stagnant for for a while, somebody else comes takes over and they become sort of the head of the mod. Yeah. So yeah. when I came back, someone has uh, had already taken over the Navy SEALs uh, uh, kind of IP. So uh, it was uh, I, I wasn't in charge anymore. So I, I wasn't able to uh, create the the game that I wanted to make. I had to. I was actually uh, somebody else was in charge of the mod kind of thing. So I, basically, what I did was I said, you know, screw this. I don't want to make a Navy Seals Quake Two. I just said, uh, I just I'm just gonna uh, find another mod that I wanted to work on. And, I, and lo and behold, there was this great uh, mod that I kind of uh, stumbled upon called Action Quake. And then at the time, uh, I, I I offered them my services. I said, listen, I, I can make these great weapon models, you know, and and uh, they were they were said yeah sure we can use your help and uh, that's how it started I just kind of met them through there and yeah and I, I spent about a year working with them and uh, it was it was really uh, it was a great time because uh, as you say it's it was a really fun mod and in fact that was the mod that really convinced me that round based uh, team play was was really the way to go for me uh, in terms of what what I really felt was uh, would encourage team play like not 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 being able to respawn really uh, in, in, invoked a certain sense of uh, fear and a sense of uh, you know, um, you know, just trepidation, trepidation exactly. Yeah, exactly, and it really just changes the way players play, and uh, it, it kind of encourages them to play in more uh, in a team setting. So, so definitely, that that that, that mod was uh, was a definite, um, uh, really high, like uh, a big point in my career for me. You know. So talking about Quake, obviously Carmack and Ramiro, uh, mm -hmm, they, yeah. they, back in the day they were you know, basically the guys. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. We already had a, a brief discussion about it. You do look up to, uh, to John Carmack, of course. Yeah. Um, Quake 2, one, mm -hmm. of, one of the better engines. I mm -hmm. mean, it's obviously still around in, in some form or fashion today yeah, in, in yeah. many different you know, free-to-play games. Yeah, and things iterations, like that. yeah. Um, speaking of Quake 2, what, what would you say your favorite mod outside of Action Quake was? Oh, gosh. Oh, let's see. Quake 2... Um yeah, it's uh, you know, it's honestly uh, quick two. There was quick two. Uh, TFC was pretty big, but I, I never really got into TFC. Um, like I was more into the military style shooters. So um, yeah, it's weird. I, I don't think I really uh, had a chance to play any other mod uh, other than Action Quake Two because. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's. He's probably so tied up with the development. Yeah, and that and that too. Yeah, else, yeah, yeah, that that's a good point too. Because when I was when I was working on Action Quake too, I would spend like 20, uh, 20 hours a week. So it was almost like a part time job. So. So I didn't have time to even play other games. I was mostly just play testing Action Quake 2. So I would work on it for 20 hours and then spend like maybe 10 hours, you know. So uh, it was it was it was really really time consuming. So yeah, but but for sure it was one of the most enjoyable moments, enjoyable periods of my life. You know, I mean I think working in such a in an environment like that, working in the indie environment was really just appealing to me. Yeah. I mean the only uh, only drawback is you, you're not getting paid, you're not getting funded. But just the amount of uh, freedom and the amount of just, oh, God, just... The satisfaction as yeah. well. It's got to be that. Feel, and, feeling like you've created something from the ground up, basically. Yeah, and also the fact that we were so close to the community. There was no layer of, you know, abstraction. There was no layer of, you know... Uh, just you know, don't say this, don't say that, yeah. don't 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 do this. There's no none NDAs of that. Or any yeah, of that kind yeah, of, exactly. Yeah. So just having that 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 closeness to the community was just huge, and it just it really motivated us uh, in terms of uh, w wanting us to create a product that would you know deliver and satisfy the community uh, faster. And uh, yeah, for sure, it was 
one of the most enjoyable times in my life, you know. Understandable, understandable. Yeah. There's a great mod as well. I implore you to check it out if you've never yeah. played Action Quake 2. Yeah. It's still it's still awesome to this day. I mean, I, yeah. I have Quake 2 with a lot of mods on my PC at home right now. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to find a game of it online these days, but you can still always get the old the old Q-Bots and stuff like that and mm -hmm. fire it up and just have a blast. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, after that, you moved on, and mm -hmm. this is where we're going to get to the period of, like, 1999, mm -hmm. yeah. which is obviously when we saw the first iteration of Counter-Strike. Right. Mm -hmm. What was your actual inspiration? Obviously, we've already talked about Navy SEALs and such. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Half Life, you know, Half Life engine. I believe it was a modified Quake Two engine, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, you don't, you already had experience in the mm -hmm. Quake Two yeah. SDK environment, right? Yeah. So uh, it was natural for me to choose the Half Life engine because I think at the time there was really only the Unreal Engine or the Half Life engine. There was really other engines to really pick and choose from. So, so yeah, it was kind of a natural uh, uh, choice for me to just choose that engine because it had so many similarities to Quake Two. Uh, and with regards to like uh, why I chose uh, to to make a Counter Strike was. Uh, uh, at the time, I was just uh, became really interested in counterterrorism. I was I was reading up on a lot of uh, uh, like special forces in, in the, that fight counterterrorism. You know, like the GIG and the SAS. And again, uh, these these types of things. I mean, the way that they they operate is just it's very mysterious and it's very kind of intriguing for me. So, uh, so yeah, it was for me. It felt like a natural uh, thing to do to make a game that would focus on these units and uh, and also the fact that they they, they operate in such a very uh, coordinated uh, uh, pattern that I felt that this would be very great for team play if we can if I can somehow uh, mimic that sort of uh, feeling that how they, how they move and how they operate in a very uh, coordinated <clears throat> fashion but uh, but as you as you know when you when you join, when you join a public server of Counter Strike it's, it never really <laughs> well, happens yeah. that way it's but, almost like but, but when it does happen the other side of the coin is yeah the when East it does Coast happen development. exactly it's beautiful when, yeah. it, when it does happen I mean all you've got to do is look at teams like Fnatic I know you just mm -hmm. recently had an interview with Khan who's mm -hmm. one of the uh, the world's best Counter Strike players yeah he's he's um, a great guy yeah. those kind of guys they took it to the next level do you think that was ever your intention like the the boost strats and all that kind of stuff uh, the way it was actually played in the end no actually you know that kind of, that stuff those strategies evolved kind of organically through themselves I never actually programmed them into the game. You know, I mean, when you make a game and uh, when you make a game like Counter Strike, you don't really. Uh, there's a lot of little uh, things that you, you don't really uh, kind of you can't really predict. You know, they kind of just, uh, just organically, organically develop. develop yeah. yeah, and uh, some people say, well, those are bugs. You should fix those. But you know, uh, it's 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 a, it's a really hard, tough to dis decision as a, as the developer to say, well, you know, should we fix that or should we kind of uh, let it go because it seems like a lot of people are using it and they kind of enjoy it. So. So there were certain things that we were we, we had uh, a lot of controversy over, like in terms of should we fix this or not. Like for example, bunny hopping. Uh, a lot of people were using this to uh, a certain advantage, and then they they were saying this is a legitimate uh, thing and we should keep it. But you know, I, I, it was a bit, it, it was a tough decision for us because uh, you know as obviously it, we knew it would disappoint a lot of players, but uh, we felt that it wasn't in line with the, the the vision of what we wanted to to focus on, and we just didn't want we just didn't like the the, the sense of seeing everyone just humping around like that. It just yeah. it felt more like. Quake and unreal. And I think more so with Counter Strike as well. Anytime mm. anyone touches anything with Counter Strike, mm. you can basically expect like a complete shitstorm of people like, oh my god, what's yeah, this? Why yeah. have they added the riot shield? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's probably the prime example back in 1.5. I think it was 1.5 when the riot shield was added. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 1.3 or something. But yeah, it, people went absolutely ballistic over and it. And so. then it was just removed really quickly. So, I mean, that, that that's the kind of thing that I was really afraid of with uh, with developing a, a new game. And that's kind of why I, I, I left uh, the, the CS franchise. And and it was it, I was uh, I was I felt more comfortable working on something that didn't have that uh, you know that that weight tied so down. You, to you it. felt your development cycle become somewhat stagnant and yeah. the pre, well the expectation the expectations. Yeah, upon. exactly. Yeah, and it was it was almost kind of like dealing with that vocal uh, uh, you know you know just vocal community was was it's a, it's a bit it's a bit of a challenge. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the knock against Counter Strike these days as an esport is that it's you know it's kind of become stale. You have the same set of maps. Mm -hmm. Nobody's mm -hmm. willing to take on any new maps. I mean, Valve, mm -hmm. Valve do try. They had like Operation Payback, which was a uh, mm -hmm. community way of developing new maps for the mm -hmm. game and things yeah. like that. But it didn't really take off. I mean, what what we see is we see the same standard set of rotation. Yeah, um, it's too bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I I wouldn't mind seeing some new maps in there. North America mm -hmm. tries. There's leagues yeah. out there that do try and yeah. force new maps upon people. Mm -hmm. uh, less so in the public scene, I will say that because you, you obviously have things like you know the surf maps and. Mm -hmm. Some, some weird developments that probably you never even intended as exactly. well. Exactly. In fact, I didn't even know about the surf maps until three years ago. Someone said, uh, what's... Uh you know, what, what are they called? They're called like uh, fun maps. No, no, fun maps or something else. GG maps. GG maps, yeah. So anyways, I was really kind of like, oh my God, you know. Because I left, I stopped playing Counter-Strike uh, at around uh, 1.0. You know, after that was released, I kind of said, okay, you know what, I'm, 
I, I, I want to focus on a, a new project and I don't want to, I didn't have any time to spend with Counter-Strike. So uh, a lot of the, the things that came out after 1.0, I was just kind of oblivious to. I just had no idea they existed. So yeah, yeah but yeah, it's, it's still, it still amazes me that it's still kind of a, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a pretty, uh, um, well, it's a pretty large player base even to this day. So, you know, but across, across all three iterations as well. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. has their own favorite version. But yeah, it's actually weird. It's like CSGO, CS Source in 1.6, and they all have very large numbers too. But yeah. CSGO being the biggest, obviously. But it still, it still amazes me that you know they, they can uh, these 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 games can still have their own little player base and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. They definitely did inspire a hardcore following, and rightfully so, because like mm -hmm. I said, I mean, 10 years of my life spent playing some version of Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. um, in the UK, 1.6 kind of fell off when CSS came out, which, to be honest, broke my heart, because mm. I'm, I much preferred, you know, uh, some vanilla. Yeah, yeah, it was just so I much mean, nicer. Yeah, I, I get that from a lot of people, and uh, like, like, what, what was it about 1.6? It's mostly the movement, I think. Yeah. It's, it's the movement, the yeah. recoil. The recoil, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. the, the recoil in the AK is so different in the different versions. Oh. Like, I used to love the, the old 1.3 spray pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, all you have to do is, is you'd be on YouTube watching this video, so as mm -hmm. soon as this U, uh, YouTube video finishes, mm -hmm. just search for CS 1.3 spray AK, <laughs> and you'll, you will see exactly why I loved, uh, you know, the earlier versions of Counter-Strike. Oh, okay, That's yeah. not to say that the new versions aren't great. I mean, I still cast mm -hmm. Counter-Strike on, mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, it, for my money, it's, it's one of the tightest. Uh, tighter games out there when it comes to tactics and professionality these days so yeah. it still does have a very vibrant scene mm -hmm. anyway uh, you, you obviously after the, the initial development cycle you then signed on with Valve mm -hmm. I was working mm -hmm. with uh, with Gabe Newell and the guys over there did you enjoy that or? I did uh, it was an amazing experience just working with uh, with a company that was full of so many uh, like talented people and like uh, to be honest, it was uh, it was really kind of intimidating, you know. I mean, because uh, when you're when you're working around with someone with people that are just at that caliber, you you really you feel like you really need to step up your game, and you don't you, you don't want to you know release uh, or you don't want to work on something that's unimpressive. So it's there was a there was a sort of a burden, like, and I don't think it was like a it wasn't kind of like. Um, in, like it wasn't directly imposed upon everyone. Like it, you know, Gabe never said, "Okay, you need to do this, or, or else you're fired." It was. He, I mean, Gabe was an awesome boss. He was. He would always try to uh, give us the most comfortable environment uh, possible. And, and I think, uh, you know, some people flourished under that. But um, you know, for me, I think I was just. I wasn't able to really uh, take hold of that. And you know, uh, but yeah. I think most of it was just because I think uh, the CS franchise just kind of grew to such a state that I, I felt kind of. Uh, uh, I think uh, mentally, just really, I didn't want to uh, deal with uh, such a uh, critical uh, player base. I think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because obviously I think, the, yeah. the pressure on a sequel would have been would have been immense. Yeah, it is. I mean, and we, we saw it when CSS came out. It didn't. The initial yeah. launch of it was. I mean, it had problems. Let's say that there was some bugs in there that people mm -hmm. didn't like. It wasn't initially adopted for all tournaments and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, no. um, and I think Valve did take a lot of criticism mm -hmm. over CSS. So yeah. maybe you dodged a bullet there. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, Valve are very uh, like they're uh, they're really uh, patient about these things. They know that well, when they first release games, they know it's never going to be uh, like there's always going to have some vocal people. But uh, they they take the time to really to address those those concerns. And you know, I mean, you look at CS Source now, and it's it's still I mean, it's it's got really uh, quite a quite a healthy player base. And uh, you know, I think they really they listen to a lot of the concerns. And you look at CS Go now, and it's it's just. And I think it's it's become really successful for them, and uh, so they 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 uh, they're really really good at that, you know. Yeah, they they do actually have you know the the, the patches that they put out and stuff. They mm -hmm. they do make sure that the actual you know they make sure the game is functional after a certain amount of time. I say yeah. functional; it was functional upon release, but yeah. they they tweak it. They make sure it's balanced yeah. and all that kind of good stuff. I have to say, yeah. like. Uh, Goal was passed off to Hidden Hidden Path, but they've done a great job of it. They seem to have the same mentality that, mm -hmm. that Valve themselves would. So well, actually, Go was actually uh, developed a lot in a large part at actually internally at Valve as, as well. Yeah, uh, I remember I was there at one uh, one point and I visited them, and uh, they actually had the guys from Hidden Path working inside the office uh, closely with a large uh, contingent of Valve employees. So I would say it's you know I don't I don't want to like. Uh, say, I don't want to like say things that uh, that aren't maybe 100 percent accurate, but but when I from what I from what I saw from from what I heard of uh, talking to the guys at Valve, I think there was a, Valve did play a large part in the development of CS:GO. It so was it was a, a collaborative. It was it was, it was right. definitely uh, to me it, I sensed that it was very collaborative. Like I saw there was a lot of input from Valve. You know. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So obviously, I think it was was it 2005 when you left you left Valve, I believe. Uh, yeah, right around the end of 2005, like uh, starting into 2006. So yeah, near the end of 2005, um, uh, after I worked on D Day of Defeat Source, uh, after that was released, and uh, they, uh, I think we came to a mutual agreement that 
uh, it was a very amicable uh, splitting. I mean, it wasn't. There was no harsh feelings about it at all. I mean, there was no bitterness. Or no, no. I'd, I mean, I'd imagine there isn't because obviously Ti is using a modified sauce. Anyway. It is, and I, in fact, uh, you know, the thing is, uh, Ti. I got a lot of help from Valve. In fact, during the development of Ti, like they would also give me some uh, technical assistance, more so than other uh, people who licensed the Source Engine. So, so uh, you know, they they get, they kind of went above and beyond in in, in terms of and just getting me to uh, finish this product, and uh, and, and I'm, I'm really grateful for for that and because I you know I'm fortunate to have a very good relationship with them uh, at least I think I do <laughs> but you know it just seems every time I go there they treat me quite well you know so uh, but they're probably happy when I leave or something <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know yeah no, I but know. but yeah they, I mean f I, I still have a great uh, uh, a great m number of friends there that that you know still work there and I, I still keep in touch with from time to time so is, is the culture there as cool as everybody says because I've read obviously I think most people who, who are involved mm -hmm. heavily in game yeah. have read the uh, the Valve employee handbook <laughs> yeah call. yeah is it yeah. really that way is it, is it as cool as it seems or uh, it is. It is. Uh, you know. I mean. I think that handbook kind of makes it uh, like sound like Nirvana. Uh, you know. I mean. They have. It, it's not like 100% perfect. I mean. Like. Uh, it's probably impossible to have a company that, that that does everything right. But I would say for the most part. I mean. It was one of the most enjoyable companies I've ever. You know. Witnessed. You know. The, the environment that they create for 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 everyone. And you know. The fact that Gabe really really tries to make everyone uh, like. It's kind of like. Uh, you know. The Google environment. How. You know. They really try to focus on. Uh, uh, retaining their, their, their employees because for them uh, when an employee leaves they, they kind of uh, they look at that as a big failure on their part like in terms of their their culture and so they really really um, they really focus on employee uh, happiness so so yeah I mean like a lot, I, I think a lot of uh, there, there are some days where I actually regret leaving it because uh, looking back on it I, I felt like uh, it was a wonderful environment to work in uh, but I think uh, personally for me to to grow uh, like my, my career and just to to expand my uh, my skill set. I, I think I, I I think it was better that I left because I was able to just uh, you know experience more things and and you know uh, more challenges that I never would have experienced if I was working under that uh, such a, a very sheltered kind of environment. A very um, it was a very safe environment. It, it yeah. was you know I guess that's. I, I know you said during the Khan interview as well. You, you perhaps thought it might have been a little bit too much. You know a little bit a little bit too much too quickly perhaps. Mm. Uh, with regards to uh, like uh, Counter Strike, uh, yeah, just mm -hmm. the, the the sort of progression from it being homebrew, you know, mm. small, yeah. sort of bedroom startup yeah. to all of a sudden, yeah. biggest game in the world, yeah, launched perhaps. a whole new genre of, t of tactical FPS. Yeah, I mean, obviously there were games out there like Raven Shield and things like that, but they never had the the multiplayer success. Mm -hmm. uh, you could argue maybe largely in part because of the internet infrastructure really, really didn't exist at that point. Yeah, um, but even so, I mean, the fact that it hit LAN as hard as it did, mm -hmm. you know, you basically off the back of it, we developed a whole new industry between that and Quake, mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. esports industry, which is you know now yeah. flourishing, we're starting yeah. to see the fruits of that being being brought to fruition. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, the, just the whole setup. Did you, did you find it was a little bit? I mean, you, you've already alluded to the fact that you felt a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you think now you would be able to deal with that pressure better, or? Yeah, I actually, you know, it's weird because I mean, uh, it's been a while since uh, since the, uh, that that success really hit me because uh, you know when I was with Valve, I was. Uh, uh, dealing uh, when I was working with the Counter Strike IP, uh, you know, it, I think it took me like two or three years for me to just get over that. You know, the fact that it was huge. You know, and like uh, I, I just I stopped kind of like uh, really thinking about it probably uh, in 2004, where I was just kind of like, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's it, it doesn't really uh, change the way that we're going to be working. So, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, but I mean, as far as uh, my wanting to leave Valve. Um, yeah, I think it was just mostly because uh, it was just the franchise. Just be, be, it just became too. Uh, I think it just became too hard to move. You, you know? felt like you was pigeonholed with it, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I do kind of have a. Um, I, I do kind of have some kind of a bit of I, I, I don't know sympathy is the right word but I mean it's I, to me I, I feel like Valve have a big challenge in their hands because uh, you know obviously when they make a sequel I mean which I, I imagine they will you know it's uh, it, it's it's going to be a challenge for them to 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 try to keep this player base up because you look at what's happening now I mean you've got three different people three different uh, groups of players playing three different products of Counter Strike and you know you don't have that with uh, other games like like for example. Uh, uh, the Call of Duty series. I mean, well, actually, you, you sort of do have to, to a degree. Though, yeah. I mean, Modern Warfare still has yeah, it does a, have a, a, a large, a large yeah, part exactly. Of it. So this kind of harkens back to the point I was making before about you know small mod teams being taken over and then you mm, know yeah. if different mod teams coming in because there is a pro mod out there. Yeah, um, for CS Pro. Uh, no, for um, Modern Warfare, oh, which okay. basically removes like cooking of grenades and you know things that make oh. the game unbalanced. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's mm -hmm. that's still quite popular on the PC to this day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, there's there's. 
if the game's good enough, it's always going to survive, and that's why 1.6 is, you know, it's going to be a run with cockroaches and sure at the end of the world, I think. So <laughs> that's cool, yeah. But yeah, I mean, to, to have created something that's lasted that long has got to be cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your new creation. Let's talk about tactical intervention. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, I, I had the chance to play it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm, I actually yeah. I actually live with, with one of your community managers, so... Oh, okay, um, cool. I'm, yeah. I've been exposed to it quite a bit, obviously. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about Gamescom, first of all, because Gamescom, I think, was a big success for you guys, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, was, it was huge. I mean, uh, I've never been to a Gamescom, so I, don't, I didn't ever really... Uh, understood the whole phenomenon of, of how big it can get but uh, it was it was really awesome just seeing all those players uh, all those people there and just really seeing uh, and, and you know a lot of them were genuinely excited about the game and that was really uh, it was really encouraging for us and uh, yeah we're, we're really we're, uh, I think uh, I think it was a great turnout for us I think we had like 5,000 people coming to our booth so uh, yeah I'm, I mean it was uh, definitely a positive uh, positive uh, event for us and uh, yeah so here's a question. With, with the marketplace as swollen as it is, you know, there's, there's so many different tactical shooters out there now. Yeah. yeah. Um, AAA titles and, and free to play and mm -hmm. all the different models that are accessible these days. Mm -hmm. Do you think you will be able to reach critical mass with TI? Do you think you can, you can build that user base and get the same sort of buzz that you did with the uh, original Counter Strike? Uh, it's going to be a challenge. You know, I mean, uh, you know, when I started this project uh, seven years ago, uh, there was a window of opportunity and it was a bit easier to, to get your name out, to, get, to actually uh, exist. Uh, but but uh, you know in today's age uh, you know the, the genre has matured to such a state that you've got so many great IPs out there, so many great franchises, and it's it's a real challenge for us to compete with them. But uh, you know I feel like uh, TI has a lot of uh, innovative uh, things that really allow us to separate ourselves from those other games, and you know I mean uh, really allows us to uh, you know, build a, a separate player base because people can sort of look at our game and say, well you know it's nothing like these games, and they can sort of. Uh, you know, if for us, I didn't want to make a clone of Counter Strike and just you know make prettier graphics, because uh, I I didn't think that that would be a, a good way of you know uh, developing a new player base. Because uh, you know, for me, for for a player to choose between two games, I think it has to have offer something unique. Each each game uh, will have to offer like a very unique experience. So. So yeah, uh, I feel like TI has a lot of uh, innovative features that really uh, allow us to distinguish ourselves. And uh, as far as uh, what what I think, uh, how how do I think we're going to grow? I think it's going to require a lot of time, a lot of a uh, lot of money, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of effort on our part to develop new content. Because I think uh, over time, uh, I I think we can actually uh, uh, get the game to be polished uh, the way CS:GO is. Because uh, you know, CS:GO is a, is a huge project, and you know a lot of um, I mean a lot of they got a lot of great manpower working on that. So it's it's always tough to compete with such a such a polished product. So, um, yeah. but uh, we, we we do our best, and uh, I mean we have a very uh, like a very committed community uh, that are playing our game right now, and and I think that's really what drives us to 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 make the game better because we, we know that there's a, there's a market out there for us. We just have to just have to keep at it, just keep improving the game, and you know we're not going to impress everybody. I know this game is not for everyone. I mean people uh, we've got people that play the game and just feel like it's too comp complicated and it's it's nothing like CS. Uh, because uh, they're, they're kind of uh, they're having a challenge, kind of adapting to all the new things that we're throwing at them, and and uh, that's understandable because uh, w it, it has a lot of new things, new features, and uh, we probably don't do a good job of introducing people players into that, uh, not the way like Counter Strike or Valve does. You know, they have great tutorials and that kind of thing. So, uh, so it's going to be a challenge for us to grow, but um, but I feel like we have we have a product that that is uh, that, that has a very solid foundation that we can take take it uh, take it further. You know. Now let's talk about some of those innovations because mm -hmm. I, I, like I said, I have played a little bit of the game at this point now, and uh, the highway map. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's something that's new. It's obviously you know you have a VIP mode for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. um, he's got intelligence that he needs to protect, and the yeah. terrorists need to steal. It's, it's limited it's intelligence, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. But it's 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 a cool concept. I have to yeah. say, it is, it is a cool concept. Yeah. Um, yeah implementing that on, on the Source engine was that relatively easy to do? Or? God, no, no. It was. Uh, I think it took us a few years to uh, maybe two years total just to get that 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 everything about that that. That that uh, that mission to be working like for one thing the the vehicles uh, were very tricky to get working and I think even to this day some people will say oh the vehicles are still kind of janky, but you know I mean uh, getting them to that this point I think uh, it, it was really uh, it was very difficult but it was one of the things that I felt like I felt like th there was something fun that that could be fun about this mi mission mode and you know it was it was a gut feeling I didn't think it would be uh, uh, like a huge hit the way it is right now I mean people I think right now uh, I think it was like uh, it's probably the most popular game mode uh, easily out of all the other ones so uh, everyone al always wants to play that map so uh, so it's always kind of a it's always kind of a, kind of a risk when when you develop these new game modes because you're never really sure if it's going to be a hit you know you you only play it with your uh, with your yourself and your teammates and it's it's really hard to get a good vibe for how this is gonna uh, how the how the 
how the general population is going to react. So uh, we were really pleasantly surprised when people uh, uh, picked up on it and they were like, wow, this is really fun. And uh, it really uh, really encouraged us to, to make uh, more of those types of maps. And, and that's something that we're definitely working on. And um, But yeah, in terms of uh, how uh, the difficulty in implementing that, it was, it was it was probably one of the hardest features to implement, uh, like out of all the features that we have in our game, like dogs, shields, and everything else. Uh, developing that that vehicle feature was was probably easily the most challenging aspect of it. You know, but I mean, um, some some of the innovations, like you say, with, with the dogs and things like that, the mm -hmm. way you control it with with T and things like that. Mm -hmm, yeah. I think again, like you never intended with with Counter Strike to have that depth in the strategies that, that we do see these days. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, if if TI does take off, I think there's even more scope for those sort of things with you know mm -hmm. the additions of, of dogs and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking about esports, is is there any any plans for sort of tournaments or esports support from from you guys over at the TI Development Studios? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, our publisher, Lead Games, are really keen on setting up some tournaments. Uh, I think at the end of this month, and uh, if not, um, you know, early early October. But we're definitely focused on on, on taking this to the esports scene because we feel that this is the the key to making this game grow and you know and the popularity of this game for for it to become uh, big like CS:GO. We really need to uh, you know uh, attack the you know really just focus on making an esports friendly experience and uh, and we're 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 trying to implement features that are that are really. Uh, uh, promote esports, for example, we're a spectating mode where you can actually just uh, spectate a, a game that's in session, and you know, uh, th like features like this will, will help us uh, to become more esports friendly, and uh, it's something we're definitely working on. I think the, the perfect model to look at would be the way r that Riot have actually pushed League of Legends. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it got big before they really started doing the tournaments, but that's what, for my money, pushed them over the top. Oh, really? the, the fact that on, you know, any, well, put it this way, we have the finals coming up in, in September. Mm -hmm. um, I would anticipate probably more than a million people on, on, you know, concurrent on stream at that point. Jeez, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's some crazy exposure when you think about it. Yeah, uh, they have a good game. And, uh, you know, I think it's really taken uh, the world by storm. And um, uh, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's an interesting uh, seeing how the in, uh, the industry kind of shifts uh, in kind of ebbs and flows. You know, I mean, like, you know, ten years ago, FPSs were the rage, and then you know now we have mobiles taking over. Uh, it's it's very interesting just seeing that and like being alive to to witness all these uh, these really kind of you know who knows maybe in ten years FPS is going to be you know back on top and uh, or maybe there's going to be a new genre. So it's 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 very difficult to predict these things, but uh, yeah. It's interesting to watch, though. But uh, but I mean, being part of like a, a development team, it's very challenging for us because, you, you know, we don't know what's going to be fresh, or we, we don't know what's going to be uh, all the rage in, yeah. in the next few years. Anticipating where, where the yeah. industry is going to so go. Yeah, so it's course. it's it's a huge challenge. We just yeah do the best we can. Hopefully, uh, we're not too late to the party. You know. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I think I think TI has mm -hmm. has basically a lot of features that that could be you know coupled mm -hmm. with esports features mm -hmm. could make yeah. it actually quite popular esports title. Yeah, um, well, that, that's I mean, really I, 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 don't, I don't think like things like um, you know the dogs and things like that are necessarily going to be used in esports. It's mm -hmm. probably yeah. going to be a straight up. You know, five versus five format at the end. Yeah, of the day. yeah. But there's still scope there, and you know, mm -hmm, yeah. obviously the, the the way that you are implementing it with with you know the free to play model as well, I think mm -hmm. that's going to help as well because my understanding of the way that you're implementing free to play is it's not going to be like some of the games are where it's pay to win. Yeah, it's going to no, be sure. as, as, and you don't have to grind either from what I understand as well. No, it's yeah, be just we, a couple of hours of play. And yeah, we, you have we've made to it everything you will want basically. Yeah, I mean, working with our publisher, they come from a very a heavy esports background. In fact, a lot of their employees are from esports, and they, they I mean, we, they were, we're really happy to work with them because they, they really feel that they, in order for this game to succeed, it, it needs to be able to be accessible to, to players right from the, from the get go. You know, they, they don't want people to grind too much. And, you know, it, we have a very uh, fair and balanced uh, uh, shop system where they can purchase the items. And uh, so uh, I think we're, uh, we're just really, um, we're, we're, we're optimistic that it's going gonna, it's gonna to appeal to a lot of the players and, and not turn them off too much. Because uh, the whole pay to win mentality is something that we're really, really, uh, as, as, as everyone, as every free to play developer is, 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 uh, is focused on, you know, they, they really want to make the game accessible to everyone. So Yeah, there's definitely yeah. a balance to be struck there. There I mean, is, the, yeah. The, 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 I think, again, Riot, the way they've implemented, you know, skins and things like that. Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. and, and Valve with Delta as well, I mean, the, yeah. the way they've implemented tickets for events and, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. There are, yeah. There are ways of, of, of making it you know, of viable yeah. and, and making it, yeah, like you say, monetizable. But there's an interesting content. thing uh, with regards to those types of games like uh, Dota and League of Legends I, I feel that they have a more uh, opportunity for them to introduce skins because being a fantasy game you can just introduce like like a thousands of skins you know but w when your game is uh, deals in a realistic setting in like in a kind of like a modern type shooter thing 
you're, you're kind of limited to what you can uh, really uh, introduce before your game turns into like a circus, you know. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what I want to avoid. I don't want to turn this game into just oh, crazy skins and well, all that. That kind of things. harkens back to your point about bunny hopping. I mean, if, it takes, yeah. if it takes away from that authentic. You yeah, know, I know. I, I, feel. I think that's a reason why a lot of the people who play our game they they, they want to have that uh, that immersion of, of of that sense of this is a you know a game that takes place in the counterterrorism uh, theme. I don't want to see some dude with a pink thong running around, you know, like just, you know, woo, I just paid this like $50, you know, <laughs> look at me. I, I just think that that's, that's uh, it, it belongs in a fashion show. I just don't think that that's something that I really want to see in this game. So. Yeah, I think it would, it would detract from the game, to be honest. Uh, for me, it would. So I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping that um, it, it doesn't have to come down to that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, you know, we'll maybe, see. Yeah. Maybe we'll get like a Gooseman skin in that pink thong <laughs> yeah. eventually. You know? So yeah. It's a possibility. I yeah, suppose. I know. So we might get desperate. We might be selling some crazy shit. You know? maybe, <laughs> some, maybe some fur coats or something like that, you know? Pimp your character. Yeah. Sort of <laughs> yeah. Uh, exhibit might like yeah. it, I maybe, maybe you'll get his fan base. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, TI, I mean, it's it's uh, now at open beta stage. It's mm -hmm. obviously you've implemented it into the Steam client. Yeah. Um, yeah that's going to help. That's going to help a lot. Uh, exactly. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I think a lot of people who are watching this probably realize we actually did release this game about... Uh, uh, six months ago in North America, with uh, um, but it wasn't on Steam, and we had a huge amount of uh, players telling us, uh, you know, you should go on Steam. You know, I don't want to play your game. I don't want to download this 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 client that's not Steam. So they were kind of adverse to downloading these things. They they kind of uh, we got a lot of uh, people saying that it was a virus. <laughs> See, the, I mean, the, the, the thing is, even EA struggled with getting people to download the client. I mean, yeah. Origin. Like, yeah, exactly. The yeah. humble bumble, hum, hum, humble bundle that just did. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of those games you could activate on Steam. Oh yeah. So a lot of people only bought the games they could activate on Steam, so oh. they didn't have to deal with Origin. Wow. So okay. I, yeah. I honestly think you being on Steam now is going to be. It, it definitely helped the numbers, man. We, I mean, we saw our numbers just like ten times more. So uh, for sure, it really helped the numbers and it helped the exposure. Just and a lot of people didn't even know about our game. Like uh, uh, they just didn't know it even existed. So just being on Steam just uh, gave us a lot more exposure. So uh, it's been a huge boost for us. You know. That's, I mean, that's cool. That's one of the things about it. Steam when it first came out, when it replaced one, I wasn't a huge fan of. Yeah, um, had a lot of growing pains. Yeah. It certainly did. It certainly yeah. did. And, you know, those times when you couldn't get on and you just bought a game. Yeah, exactly. I just paid like yeah. twenty nine ninety nine. I can't play my game because. And it was a single creation. player game, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, okay, well, you have to activate it first before you can play it. Oh, okay. And there was yeah. no, I, I think there was no offline mode at first. Yeah, well, there was, was, yeah, there was not, yeah. yeah and it was an, an absolute nightmare. Yeah, I remember that. And then uh, they introduced the offline mode and that helped a bit. But yeah, I remember there's a huge amount of, uh, I was I was working at Valve at the time when, when Steam was first uh, released. And uh, I was there and uh, I, I get to witness the, 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 the amount of uh, stress and the amount of uh, flack that, that Valve were getting with Steam. But, you know, I mean, I was just uh, impressed with the way that they handled it and just uh, how they uh, were able to just uh, blow through all those those uh, those uh, early issues and you know look at it now it's just freaking huge. Yeah, but I, mean, uh, I, I honestly think it's one of the, the cooler things that's happened to PC games. I think I mean, so too. Yeah, it's the, the, yeah. the way that they're looking at doing the Steam box and things like that as well. It's yeah. it's all it's all you know cool concept and I'm super stoked about Steam these days. It's, yeah. it's the easiest way of installing anything. Mm -hmm. Automatically updates. You have yeah. all your friends lists for every single game. You know yeah. in, in one spot. Yeah. You have 28 different clients. You have to open to do this, this, and yeah. this before you can yeah, even launch a game. It's, it's interesting because when I was at Valve and when um, when when Gabe uh, first mentioned uh, when the idea of Steam first came out, uh, even myself and a lot of guys at Valve, they were kind of skeptical about you know this you know is this going to fly because there was no such thing as buying games online at the time you know direct download didn't exist you know everybody was going to uh, uh, Best Buy and eBay or all those games uh, to buy games retail so you know it was a huge risk for for a game to take this but uh, you know just seeing it what the, how it how it evolved now. I mean, the guy's a visionary. I mean, the guy's not afraid to take chances, and he's not afraid to, you know, fail. And and I think that's one of the biggest uh, reasons why why Valve is just uh, so successful. And um, you know, it was just really uh, it's a great opportunity to work uh, around that kind of a mentality. You know. I think the analogy "live by the sword, die by the sword" definitely applies to Valve and the way they implement things. They're pretty yeah. fearless about things like that, aren't it they? It is, yeah. They? And they've grown to such a such a huge. Uh, like they just, I, I think they they can afford to take a few risks now and then. So yeah, but but yeah, it's 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 just uh, it's great uh, to just see see what they're doing with this industry. And I think they're a big part of why the the PC gaming industry is still uh, so healthy the way it is now. Because you know everyone's saying, oh, consoles dead, con uh, con PCs dead, consoles are you know it, it's all about the Xbox and it's all about the PlayStation. But you know having Steam uh, be, be exist uh, right now, it just it's really. Uh, help to keep the PC gaming industry alive. They have had the foresight as well to, to launch a PS3 client and things like that as well. So, 
-hmm. know, it's not like they're just going to stagnate on PC. Um, yeah, yeah. So even if, even if PC does get left in the dust, which mm -hmm. to be honest, I don't perceive happening. No, I don't if, think so. If you so look too. at the current gen, no, and, no, they, and they, the next they, gen as well, it's basically PCs. Yeah, I mean they've been saying that forever. But you know, the thing is, games get made on the PC. So when when people are making the games on the PC, I mean. Uh, you know, there's obviously going to be people that, that there's going to going to be a people uh, a, you know, a player base for people to, to play the games. So I think PC gaming is more for p play, uh, people who um, they're a bit more technical. They're not afraid of technology. They're not afraid of uh, uh, they they actually like to you know to 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 get closer to the uh, to the technology. So they they appreciate upgrading their computers, buying the latest video cards. You know, it's not the cheapest thing to do, but still, I think that there's always going to be that that player uh, base that that want to do that. You know, and it's just uh, I, I I don't think there's a PC gaming, uh, the death of PC gaming industry is going to happen anytime soon. You know. No, I can't perceive it happening. I mean, especially when you get towards the, you know, the, the end of a life cycle of a console when things start looking yeah. a bit dated. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And then you start getting the, the, the PC part that works out a lot better. I mean, like Battlefield yeah. will be a, a prime example of that. Yes, the console yes. version is only 32 player. Yeah. yeah. PC 64. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, I mean, with now the new consoles coming out, it's uh, obviously we're going to see a bit of a dip maybe uh, in the PC industry, but uh, I still I still think we'll survive it. You know. Yeah. Here's a question: Any any plans? Obviously, because they're all now x86 architecture, the, the new consoles. Mm -hmm. Are there going to be any future plans to take TI that route, or? Uh, you mean to put it on the Xbox or the PS4? Uh, at the moment, there are no plans for that. Uh, I really think that that's something that will we have to evaluate based on the popularity of TI. You know, if it becomes big enough, if it, if we see there's a, a certain amount of growth and we see that there's a uh, a good interest in our game, then you know, you know, who knows? Maybe we can uh, work with someone to actually bring it to a console. But uh, yeah, at the moment, no, it's it's still pretty early to to say whether or not that's going to happen. You know. Well, Gooseman, before I let you go, let's do a little bit of word association. So if I throw a, you know, a, a question out to you, you can, okay. you can yeah. answer it in uh, any, brain any test, terms that brain you want. Test. <laughs> <laughs> you can give me a one-word answer, full sure. sentence, okay. paragraph, yeah. however it works out. <laughs> so, first of all, I guess we'll start with Counter-Strike. Uh, um, uh, God, fun. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, just really, just for me, it was just happiness. I mean, if, it was the first time I was really uh, enjoying uh, doing what I really love doing, you know. So uh, for me, it was just satisfaction. You know. I, I guess that's more than one word, isn't it? <laughs> no, as many words as you want. Ah, okay, okay. I'm, okay. I'm not one of those interviews. Like, ah. that, that was more than one word. What are you doing? <laughs> that's not yeah. Gonna okay. Um, yeah. Just uh, extremely satisfying uh, period of my life. Really, just it was probably the the happiest time I've ever had making games. Uh, just that that environment and uh, working. Uh, with uh, no nobody breathing down your neck, nobody saying you got to do things this way, you got to do things like that. Uh, it was just uh, an environment for in which I could have just like, experimented with anything and, and not be afraid of failing, and and that's really the the best environment to develop things and to just uh, yeah in innovate. So next one, Valve. Uh, extremely talented, full of uh, just. Uh, they're able to just attract the best uh, of the best, and and not only that, but they're able. To, uh, they're really good at just retaining their 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 talent and their their brain power, and uh, uh, just yeah. I mean, uh, for me, they're just probably the best. Uh, I mean, easily the best uh, PC game, or even just the best gaming company to to uh, to. I mean, that that exists even to this day. I mean, just the way that they run their operations, they they really care about the community, and you know, that's not just a cliche that you know that gets bandied about, but. Uh, you know, working there, I, I got to see it firsthand. I mean, Gabe really understands the fact that if you don't uh, please your player base, you know, you, you know, they're just that's not how you grow. And that's and it, for them, it's it's you know, even though it costs a bit of money to do that and to to please your player base, uh, they understand that that money comes back. You know, because you know, one happy player is it's an it, investment. It, yeah, exactly, right. it's a very it's a smart investment. And because they're they're not about making money right away. Because I mean, they've got a lot of money. I mean, I don't want to. You know, I, I'm sure that they, they're they're pretty well, but for them, I think it's it's a case of uh, you, if you get the if you uh, if you keep that reputation of being a, a good to, for the community, uh, people it just grows and it just it, you know people everyone I talk to actually uh, the majority of people I talk to they, they have nothing but good feelings towards Valve. They they feel like Valve are just like the pinnacle of of uh, a gaming company and uh, and I, I I totally agree with them. I mean, uh, working there and just seeing how they operate, I mean, it, it is true. I mean, for the most part, they they. They do everything by the by the book, and uh, it's just it's. Uh, and I'm just glad that we have uh, companies like that that do exist, and that they don't they don't have to worry about you know uh, you know investors or you know you know paying off these bills by people. You know, uh, for them, it's all about just uh, making a you know giving uh, creating a community of of of, of uh, gaming that that's really um, that's just really healthy and just uh, 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 vibrant. Yeah. So yeah, wonderful company. Opposite end of the spectrum, EA. 
Uh, well, you know, the thing is, I have a lot of friends that work at EA, so uh, it's, it's, it's difficult for me to say anything bad about that. But, you know, uh, it's such a huge company that um, I, I don't work there myself, and I've never really worked there, so it's hard for me to, to really uh, judge uh, them. But, I mean, just from an outsider's perspective, and I, I think I have probably the same opinion as, just, uh, as anyone just like yourself. So, I mean, just seeing how they operate, I, I, I feel like they have a lot of uh, obligations to uh, uh, shareholders. And I feel, I feel like the, a lot of their titles and a lot of the things that they do, the decisions that they do, it's more about the bottom line and it's not about, uh, it doesn't seem like it's really about in the best interest of players. It's, yeah. it's, Some, sometimes they seem to be a, a bit too short-sighted, like they will cut the nose off to spite the face just to make that, that green, which exactly. to be honest, it, I mean, it's capitalism at the end of the day. It's it is, it is, it is. And it's all about paying, uh, putting, the, putting, uh, putting dinner on the table for a lot of the people. Uh, but unfortunately, there's just a lot of uh, people that you know are, are involved in the development of the game that that really need to be paid. And at the end of the day, that that this is kind of uh, they have to make decisions that are just really, really kind of brutal for for the player base. And it's a shame, though, you know. But uh, but as you say, that uh, EA does do a lot of great things, though. I mean, like the the, the amount of exp uh, the, mar the the amount of exposure that they give to their titles, and and in the, the fact that they're they're able to you know. Uh, um, I guess just bring together so many players uh, with their titles. Like for example, the FIFA series. You know, yep. it's a wonderful, ti a fun, wonderful game, and uh, you know, having such a, a such a great title and having all the players just uh, unite on that one um, t title is. It's, I think it's a good. It's good for the community. I think it's good. It's good for the industry having. Yeah, I think mean, you know. I think having the two extremes. I'm not saying that EA mm -hmm. are bad at what they do or anything like no, that. Or the way they do business is bad. Yeah. It's just you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I mean, when you compare mm -hmm. Valve versus EA, yeah, it's yeah. the two completely different companies, both of them mm -hmm. very successful. Yeah, they have their own way of getting to the top. But, um, you know, I, I prefer Valve's method because it, it, for me, it's, it's, I guess it's just, I mean, coming from a developer, coming from, a, a, you know, a player, uh, I feel that it's just, uh, it's just more morally, uh, Fair for. I mean, <laughs> just, it's much closer to the old school hacker mentality. Yeah, well. it's. I guess. I guess I can because I can sort of uh, uh, sympathize for how they how they think and, and you know and I I think they just appreciate us more. I mean, us us players more than than uh, the uh, the others who um, aren't really in it for the for the for the love of the game, you know, sort of thing. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, tactical intervention. Let's 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 talk more about tactical intervention. Of course, it is now available on Steam. Mm -hmm. um, what are your hopes in the future for it? Do you, do, do you want to see it sort of get as big as? Well, obviously, you do yeah. you want to see it get as big sure. as? Counter I, I would. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, do, do do you perceive that it could get as big as Counter Strike? Uh, I don't. You know, the thing is, in this industry, the the the, the in this day and age, the the maturity of the industry, all, all the the competition, uh, I would say no. I don't think it's realistic to to expect uh, even from our point of view for us to expect it to be as big as Counter-Strike because Counter-Strike came out at a time when the industry was just uh, kind of like uh, very uh, devoid of anything like that. It, it so hit kind of like at the right time. I mean, exactly, like when, yeah. You know, Nevermind came out by Nirvana. That was the perfect time for that album if it came out maybe five years before that. Mm -hmm, yeah. It wouldn't have been anywhere near as successful. So. Yeah, yeah. So a, lot, a lot of it is timing. That's not to say that there isn't a niche market out there for no, that yeah. sort of thing where it can be successful. Though. Yeah, I, I, you know, we're obviously hoping for, for some form of success and, uh, you know, the numbers are, 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 are pretty promising at this stage, but uh, we still have a lot of work cut out for us and, uh, you know, uh, working with, uh, closely with the, our player base, uh, working you know, just listening to their feedback, and you know, just really, uh, uh, just uh, just doing it the way uh, we uh, we worked on with uh, how we worked with Counter Strike, just being able to just use their um, their 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 feedback in a, in a in a positive way to shape the way that uh, how we want the game to to play, and also how they want the game to play. So it's a very it's a very uh, cooperative effort in, in terms of in uh, working with the community in that sense. Yeah. So I think that concludes the interview. I've pretty much run out of questions now, mm. um, Gooseman. Absolute pleasure, my friend. Well, thank That's you. Yeah, it's a pleasure being here. Seriously, yeah. one of the one of the coolest things I've ever done on camera. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, pleasure was all mine, buddy. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, guys. Yeah.